Hi, it's Leo from Made by Marley and today I've got the most amazing, cutest piece of furniture ever to show you. I've just picked it up from the local auction and what's happened to it so far is it's been in the studio, it's had a few fixes, a few repairs, Martin's had his hands on it and it's had a light scuff sand and it's had a really good clean because we're just going to crack on on and crack on with this. Now, I just, I, I'm trialling new paint which is Jubilee by Guild Lane and this is one of the colours we're going to be using today. Ooh, twit to Isn't that nice? I'm going to be trying, attempting, because this is a paint I've not used before, to mix this and this verdigris, which from the same range, together to do a sort of blend. I want it quite dark with a little bit of lighter in the middle and then we're going to paint some really good detail. There's going to be decoupage, there's going to be stamping, there's going to be uh, some IOD inlays. There's going to be everything, so let's get on. So it's kind of like I'm teaching myself to blend all over again because I'm so used to chalk paint. So I'm going to have a little bit of a play about with this. So I'm going to start with the real blue and let's kind of get some of this on here um, to start with. Um, I know that this is going to take two coats, that's fine. Oh, it's, it's an absolute <laughs> stunning colour. And I'm keeping all my drawers in and I'm keeping my hardware on as well because I want it all to blend together because there's going to be a lot of interest on this piece once we've got this sort of covered. So I'm just kind of doing this just now. I'm just getting some paint on it. I'm using a, a blending brush. So I think I'm kind of liking the look of this so far. So let's introduce some of the verdigris. I've put it in a separate pot because I just don't want it infiltrating. Let's bring it up and see. Now normally at this point I'd be spraying the hell out of it with water but that's not how this paint works so So, as per usual with blending, you're going up, down, a bit of everything. So, I'm liking so far. Try and get those strokes out of that. Um, just bring this down to here. I've kind of now infiltrated both brushes. I think this one's better for, it's a softer one for. I'm painting these as part of the piece, so let's try and get this brush strokes out. I'm wanting a little bit more of the, this on here like this. So don't worry too much, this is just our first coat. We just want to kind of get it where we think we're going to want it. So I'm just going to go ahead. There's no sort of rhyme or reason to my blend. I'm just mixing them, the two of them together to find something that I think I quite enjoy. And so far, I'm really quite enjoying this, so I'm going to keep going. I think I'm probably going to do quite... Uh, I'm going to lighten this part here up, and then I'm going to make the feet and everything much darker. And I'm just going to work up the piece the way I've, I'm doing at the moment. So, as it goes so far, I am absolutely... I'm, th I'm absolutely in love with the colour. I'm thrilled with the colour. I would say that the thing I like about this paint is... It's, it moves really well. It's not like chalk paint, you have to make sure that there's not too many drips. So you're having to keep working it to make sure that there's nothing that's dripping. Because whereas your chalk paint your, your is a much thicker paint. But then with your chalk paint you're needing tons of water to make it move. So, you know, I mean, there's, 
there's good and bad on everything, but this seems really a paint that's kind of really quite, it's not so labour intensive. So I'm going to go into the middle with my green here. just gonna go back in my blue and bring this round here like this. Bring that out a little bit here. So as you can see there's no rhyme or reason to what I'm doing. I'm just I'm just finding a blend that I like um, because I know what's going on top of this and it's gonna be really it's gonna really pop with what what these this colour So that's that part done. Don't want to kind of overwork this paint. I think one one time only deal, go for it, and then you can you can go back to it. And as I said, there'll be touch ups of this blend tomorrow. Um, I am going to work up my way up and do the sides, and we'll get this dry so it can be left overnight. So our first coat of our blend on the uh, outside of the piece is finished and tomorrow, once it's dried overnight, uh, we'll do more on top of that, see if we can get some, a little bit of texture going on it. Uh, and what I'm doing now is I'm just using the verdigris colour that I was using to mix through my real blue for inside the cupboards. I don't think I'm going to be painting the shelves. I think I'm going to keep them natural wood. Um, but this inside, I want to have a contrast for when we start doing some design work on the outside. So that's all I'm doing. And once I've done that, I'm just going to pack up for tonight and leave the stable. Um, tomorrow we'll resume when it's had and a whole night overnight, just, just curing. Okay. That's how it looks. I'll just but I'm happy with it so far. I'm really pleased with the way it's blended and I absolutely adore the colour. It's dried overnight and I'm really, really pleased with the finish. It's going to need, a cut, I would say, another half coat. I'll do that in the form of trying to put texture onto the self-leveling paint. So we'll see how that goes. But before we do this, I want to talk about, just quickly, it's qu just really quickly, um... I used to teach art in schools, but I also taught adults as well. And the first thing that um, most people said, whether they'd paid for a class or whether it was a kid, they'd say, I'm not arty. Like they were already apologizing for their work before they'd even started. And my answer was always very similar, which was something like, well, you don't need to be arty. You just need to be creative. This piece today is about being creative. It's about using what you've got in your craft stash and your armory to put together, a, using all your creativity skills to make art. So to, the first thing we're going to be doing is decoupaging. We're going to be doing a little bit of painting. We're going to be doing stamping using a potato. We're going to be using some IOD inlays. We are going to be using different paint techniques to build a piece of art on furniture using your creativity skills. So the first skill is we need to sort of look at positive and negative spaces, how things are going to look when you've finished them. There's no point putting something in the middle of this. It would look wouldn't good but something moving up it gives it movement and it, and it brings the eye up the whole piece so i cut out this um well we say jardinier where we say pot and i did this in the kitchen and i was actually quite happy with myself when i came over and it fitted i initially was going to have it running around the corner like that but i'm not i would prefer it to be on the piece now what we're going to do is and I want it grounded onto there. Using the tiniest piece of chalk known to man, and it is tiny. <laughs> I, I went to, I went over to my craft drawers over in this studio. I, I've got some of my other one in the house, but this is what we're gonna do. And it doesn't matter if it's slightly over here. We're just gonna, we're getting a rough outline because as you know, when you apply decoupage paper, you need a white surface underneath. Now we can paint back in the line um, and we can run that, that the, the uh, real blue back up beside this, but we just need a rough idea 
where our white's going to go so our decoupage paper will show up. So that's kind of roughly, I would say, where it's going to be, right to that edge there and round. And the same here, using the tiniest piece of chalk known to man. Now, I am choosing to use this piece here because I think it's going to look like a jardinier. But if I applied it this way, it would look a bit... So I'm going to cut my shape out this way so that these flowers are on both edges. Now, normally I would say never, ever cut decoupage paper or napkins with scissors. Don't do it. Use water. And you've seen me do it in previous videos. Use water and then rip it apart so you've got that edge. But I'm looking for something quite crisp. So what I'm going to attempt to do is I am going to try and cut it out and then bring this self-leveling paint to the edge. Um, I might cut it out slightly bigger than what it is just so that I can take it into that edge but we'll work it out. I want a crisp edge. It's not like I'm going to be blending to it so I want to try and keep the form. So the first thing I'm going to do is using a white paint is I'm going to paint out where my uh, jardiner is or my pot whatever you choose to call it is going to go just so that the the decoupage paper will show up so i'm going to go all the way off camera and just paint that off for a start off i've ripped the plies off the back of the napkin there was this was three ply so you don't need those you can use those to wipe something up i've folded my template and i've folded my napkin to where i want it to go now if i was you i would probably choose to draw around this but I like to fly by the seat of my pants so I'm just going to cut it out with scissors because that's how we roll going slightly uh, all these scissors are not the best scissors slightly over my edge I won't need to cut it out it's gnawing it as it is um, just holding that tight with slightly more of an edge which means we can have a tiny little bit to work with, to play with. I'm leaning it forward like this so that I can just get the shape. Now, as I said, you should probably draw it out, but this is how I'm rolling today. And along here at the top. Now, I want you to save the bits. If you use a pattern napkin that has an edge, save them because we're going to re-put the edges on. Now, I can already see that that's a little bit, but because we'll use these edges for the tops and things. So let's just have a look at this and see if it's what I'm looking for. Yeah, so that's our, our shape of our jardinier, which is going to go on there. I have to wait till this dry, so I'm going to go away and probably just put a heat gun on it just now. And then we'll get to sticking this on and start and adding some texture on it and then start working our way up our piece. So I've given this two rough coats of um, the white paint. Now, the white I used was from Jubilee Range and it's called Dover Chalk. But any white will do anything much lighter because you can appreciate if you if I glued this onto here, it's going to look really dark. If I glue this onto here, it's going to keep its whiteness and that's what we're trying to do. So the next thing we're going to do is I've got a little bit of top coat in a little pot here and we're just going to put this on a little bit at a time. Uh, I haven't got a plastic bag or anything to hand here, which is a bit silly of me, but we'll see what, how we can go. So I'll do this top section first because it's a bit awkward. It's kind of going in and out. Oop. And I'm making a bit of a mess too, which is always good. The good thing about that is I can just wipe it with my with my plies. Now, let's just make sure I get this right. So the wider bit goes at the top. And I want that about here. And decoupage 101. I'm going to stop the camera because I need to go and get some cling film because this won't work without it. Cling film, that's the best one. Your hands can rip, napkins especially. Um, if you're using a really good quality decoupage paper, like Mint by Michelle, you're you're probably much better. But but when it comes to like actual just paper napkins that you know food and serviettes, then 
you really need um, something like this so that you don't get any any wrinkles. Now you have to be kind of a wee bit careful with this and working it down, applying more um, of your your top coat as you go. Now this will start to get very rippy if you start pulling on it, so you have to be really gentle. It's not decoupage paper. Gentle is the way to go here. more top coat and you, you can see what I'm doing you just follow the lines all the way down and just applying and then smoothing I just thought I spilled a little bit of top coat on the top of the area so just wiping it be gentle and work from the inside out to your edges and you should get a really smooth look like it is part of your furniture and that's what decoupage is about it you're trying to fool the eye you know is it part have you painted that have you not painted it you know you want people to kind of really question what you've done and your processes as you've done them so I've got you going around that little edge a bit but that's okay that was kind of maybe my original sort of thought Now, remember this is a door and we are going to have to cut around this, but we are not, it's not like decoupage paper. We're going to let this dry before we start cutting into it and doing anything with it. We're just trying to get all the wrinkles out. And I am pretty, well, I just caught that with my nail there. I don't think we can come far. There's going to be shadows on both edges. Be careful of your nails. It's not a sport for big long nails. Now, we have it on and gently, ever so gently, you're just almost tickling it over the top with your sealer. Just like that. Gentle, gentle, gentle. Any rougher than that and you'll rip the napkin. It's not like decoupage paper. It's much, much softer and it will rip really easily. I mean, my brush is even maybe even a little bit too rough for it. I would get a nice soft brush to do this with and make sure that you go and seal it to the maximum all round and that will help when you go to cut up these edges as well. I wrinkled that bottom bit there and we'll have to cut a new part. See what I mean? You have to be super super gentle with it. So I'm going to go away and I'm just going to fix these little boo-boos. And we'll be back in a minute. The pieces that I saved from the from the edges are really good for making things look like they actually have a physical edge. So again, you can blend right up to this edge, so I'm not too worried about this. Just need to do it a tiny, tiny little bit more um, because this is the other end. I managed to fix this little piece here and I put a tiny little bit. If you make a mess and there's a little hole, just cut another section out. You will not notice it. There's too much going on in the pattern. So that's our bottom edge and I've cut out some more for our top edge. Now, we only want the front top edge because we'll, paint, we'll be making it look like it's um, got contents in it. So we'll be putting a shadow and things behind it, but we'll, we could really be doing, hang on a minute, think about this, Leslie. 
we need to almost this is a little bit tricky but just stick with your process I'm just kind of like arcing this like the lip Is we're going to paint the lining above it and the problem is it comes to this edge here it's got this edge here so i need a little tiny little bit more so just cutting off another piece of the edge like that and sort of measuring it up right about this line we can sort a lot of this sort of perspective like the shading and make it look round by what I will do when we ca when we carry on because it's going to have quite a few things done to it so just apply it the right way that might help just round to that edge there yeah when I, when I paint under there I'll, I'll sort that out maybe put it slightly up at that edge okay so right now you're thinking, mm, I'm not sure about that, but obviously it will come good, I promise. Just make sure that you've got no pieces of your top coat running anywhere. And I'm going to just start bringing, I'm going to start putting texture around the rest of it and I'll, I'll graduate down so that I can, you know, get blended up to this edge. So it's self-leveling paint, so I'm going to try now to get some texture on here. And obviously the way you put texture in, on things is how you apply your paint so this is what I'm doing here so it's kind of like the blend last night but I'm putting it on with more more texture as I said it was a really good coverage I think it probably will only need like one and a half but uh, um, I'm reserving my judgment just yet. I'm just applying this with with a small brush because I don't, it's, it's the paint is really thin. And I think this is where you just kind of like start maybe playing around, you know, getting to where you want to go. I mean, we're going to have a kind of tree coming up this, so. I think you can put texture into this paint. It's starting to get a bit thicker and it's starting to kind of like, we'll give that sort of cloudy look. Which I quite like. Around this edge. So I'm just going to work around the piece and give it some texture. Now you can see that, you know, it's actually doing what what I want it to do. I don't. I think with this paint, you just don't apply too much of it. I think that's probably the best way to work it. And whereas with chalk paint, you would could wet distress this. Once I've done this and got some texture onto this, I'm going to actually um, sand some edges back, give it a bit of a distressing. So I'll go on and do this. Okay, so I've worked my way around the whole piece, adding texture onto the piece, kind of giving that sort of cloudy appearance, but we're now at that stage where we're coming quite up to the jardinier that we've put on with decoupage. So I'll be taking it right up to the edge. So I'm gonna need, um, I need a brush. So, First of all, let's make sure, because I can see a little part here, let's make sure that that is totally applied. Now, we are going to fill in the back of the jardinier and everything, but really we're kind of wanting to go as close to here and to eradicate this, this line that went around the decoupage paper. Now, we're probably going to have to do two coats 
get rid of it. Um, take it right out. It won't work in our favour because we can maybe probably put a shadow around it, but just right now, we just want it to. No, that, it's just that tiny little white line I'm not wanting. Dip a little bit of that in the verdigris because that's the colour that was mixed with the blend. And it's a bit lighter here, so we need to blend that out. As soon as we can get it out far enough, you can start using a bigger brush, but I don't really want to be touching. And then here it goes in, but it's a bit darker down here, so we can go for the dark paint. This bit here needs to be touched up with white a big meter. A little later. So a little bit more of a square degree around here so that it blends in and take it out further so that you can get a bigger brush in. And there's nothing wrong with making this look like it's a shadow. We are gonna put shadows on this anyway, but we need to we need to blend all this away. So it looks seamless and tidy. It needs to look tidy. I'm not going to overwork that part because it had quite a lot of white on it. Um, same around this side. Got quite a lot of white on it, so we'll put quite a hefty coat of this on it, and then we'll come back to it. Mind you, not as hefty as this. I'm used to chalk paint not running as much, but it's just a learning curve. And if you think you've applied too much, you can just do this because we can give it a second coat. I just don't want drips down the rest of it. dry. This top part here I'm going to ignore completely because it's going to have that this is going to come down dip down a bit and it's a lot more fine work so hang on a minute I can see a piece here that's lifting. It obviously didn't get a piece of decoupage paper on it. I uh, sorry glue. Bring that right in to here and the same. So it's not still not the tidiest of jobs, but I promise you it will end up looking tidy. So I'm just going to go along this line here because that was the white line of the, the decoupage paper and just get rid of it. So I'm going to let this dry for a little bit and then we'll kind of work in pieces and stages while one part's drying, we'll work on another piece. When one part's drying, we'll work on the other piece and we'll get this done. Everything's pretty much dry. This is dry now to the touch as well. And what I've done is I've opened the drawers and just sealed under here with some sealer just so that um, everything's all nice and sealed and neat on the edges. Now, original template once you get your original template sorted and you know what sort of shape you want that's going to fit your piece i'm just going to put this kind of roughly back over here and what i've done is when you have your template is i've cut it up like this because this is a flat piece right now and you want to make it look like it's it's right now it's flat and you want to give it dimension so this is just a good way of kind of leveling it out and keeping it kind of reasonably reasonably right and this is what I'm going to do like this. I'm just going to hold this on here and I have a blue 
acrylic pen. Now I might go over and make this a bit darker, but I'm just going to use this right now to just give us a, a an edge like this. It just keeps everything reasonably sort of neat. And we can make it a bit thicker in a minute. And just off to the edge here. So that's our first band. If we, because we can use it and we just move it up slightly like this, it doesn't fit our template, but this is going to give us a second band because it's the same curvature. And as long as you're using the same curvature, it should come out looking okay. That is the theory. I kind of went a little bit, whoop, a little bit wobbly there. Bring that down there like that. I'm going, I'm going to peel like that. Um, we are going to fix this and we can paint this in or we can do something different. I'm going to actually put some gold on these lines. Now, because we have a curvature here, we can use exactly the same curvature down here. And so let's just do, I cut the other, this is the bottom half. Um, if we want to do it more correctly. And so we're going to do something like this for this line here. Now, as I said, you don't need to be a fine artist to do this. It's just to get, just to give it, suddenly now it doesn't look flat anymore. And that's, that's the important part. It's, you, you're trying to take away that flatness. And the same again, I want a nice, sort of lines, so I'm just going to use it up again. Just kind of keep your fold marks sort of central and you're kind of, you're going to be reasonably there and thereabouts. Now, as I said, I'm going to paint this in, so, you know, I'm not worried too much about it. It's just, just roughly getting our sort of shape like that. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some shade in here, so I'm just going to get my paint ready to show you what I'm going to do. So using another one of the Jubilee range, I'm using Transvaal Grey and I've, what I've done is I've just put a tiny, tiny, tiny little touch of blue in it just because if, if there was a shadow it would kind of bounce off the blue and all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put a little bit of a, a shadow on this side just here and coming in from this edge here. Um, just working it, just to give it another bit of, you know, like, reality, if you know what I mean. So we're just kind of like darkening up here. Your shadow would come up from the bottom. Don't worry about where you're going to put the gold just now. Just bring your shadow up. And then the same coming in from this sort of side. it will just start to give it a little bit more life and make it look less flat. Put more shadow down here. A um, bit of water in this. This is where the light's reflecting off it in the centre, so you're going to avoid that, that area, this patch here. And bring this along here like that. So that's us got a little bit of a, don't worry about this part here. I think Martin's getting quite concerned about it. I'm going to start working on that part next. It's just that that's kind of more of a tricky part that we have to kind of navigate. So next I'm just going to paint in the gold. Um, using the amazing acrylic gilding enamel, which I'm absolutely in love with. It needs a good star, but um, it is brilliant. And we're just going to paint in this. It might this might need two coats because it is actually the it's paper we're doing it on top of. Um, whoop, could have done with maybe a smaller brush there. Painting 
this one too. So I'm just going to paint in these lines and we'll move on to the next thing. So I'm wanting to start giving the illusion, I might have to get rid of this because it's too straight, um, that there's, there's earth in here. So um, let's just go for it. I want this to come down. We'll put another lip on it. Don't worry about it. Do something like this. Um, and we're really going to have to do some tidying up around the neck of this. But we can come back to this once this is this part is dry to do all the tidying up jobs. I just want to get this on so that we can start working on our tree. Now, as you can see, I've used dark and light brown. This this is it just would be darker further away. This would be a wee bit lighter in the front, and we'll put the blue line there, and we'll neaten up all these edges to make it look like the earth is actually in it. Right, I think it's kind of an optical illusion, this part here. I want to kind of put it up here like that, I think, which brings that bit down, which brings this bit up. As I said, we'll tidy this bit up as we go. Right, I'm just going to move straight on to the next part. With the next part, I'm going to put some black, some red, some red and some of this which is called tawny orange which I love into here like that and I'm going to mix it round because I want to start mixing a brown now. I want it a little bit darker than this so I'll just do a dip in the black and again I want a little bit more black. Now what you need to do is kind of separate half of it out. I want some of this lighter stuff here and I want a lot of a bit darker over at this edge so I'm just gonna so that I've kind of two different mixes here and then I'm going to take my micro piece of chalk and we're going to work out the the, the spacing. I can already see, if I stand back I know that this is off here but we're not worrying about this right now. Now I want my front, my kind of lowest branch to come for about here so. Now I'm doing it in chalk which means that if for whatever reason I don't like it This takes a bit of time to get it right because you really have to think about sort of composition and how far you want it to move over your piece. I'm thinking a branch there, maybe just a branch here. So bring this bit down. This is the main which is going to join on to here, I think. And we're bringing this up. We're bringing this. And we're bringing it onto the glass. And we'll have to kind of work out the glass parts. Kind of like I've got a glass marker, which we can then use to kind of see where we're going with this. I think kind of here and maybe sort of here 
and here. The most important part is this part here. I mean, where is it coming from? It needs thicker stems down the bottom. It just hasn't come from nowhere. So you have to kind of like imagine this. So this one here is this one, but it splits off here. And that's there, but it's really all the same stem. So it's coming and it's coming up this way. I'm quite happy with that. I don't want it going up. I think maybe I might, if I can, if I bring another branch out from here, then that way I can carry my design up further here. Yeah, and maybe. So you're just having fun with it. You're just you're making it quite loose. You know, we're not Picasso, we're just having fun. And that's, that's what this is about. I think maybe I might have a brush coming out, a branch coming out here somewhere, um, which kind of will bend here. Here. Yeah, so this is just enough to get me started. I know where I'm going now with my paint. And what I'm going to do is, I'm starting with a thicker brush, and I'm going to just, I'm just going to start. And we'll make this trunk look like it's coming from there um, when we do all the detail at the top of the pot. So we're having this. Now I'll change brushes in a minute. So I'm just going to go ahead now and I'm just going to paint this all in. Don't worry too much about any white chalk lines, they'll just rub off when the piece is dry. I didn't, didn't do all the fine work yet because we have all the leaves and everything else to do. But what I'm going to show you next is a printing technique to get what you're looking for, sort of uniformity and as I said, just using all your creativity skills. So I have a potato <laughs> and my kitchen knife. I am going to, Matt thinks I've lost my mind today. So I'm cutting my potato in half, right? So this is going to be my bottom one and this is going to be the top. So the bottom one of your potato, you'll leave completely as is, don't do anything to. The one that you're going to print over the top of it, if you get a kitchen skewer, and what you're going to do is varying types of holes all round the edges like this because we are going to be printing oranges. Not all over it, don't go crazy, just poke it into it like that. And this is another thing, oh, another way of using creativity can't paint oranges, print your oranges. We're going for that modern sort of art, that funky look in this piece. So, you know, anything goes. Just a couple, maybe in the centre there. Right, now, really important thing that you do when you, when you do something like this, get your paint rag and make sure that there's no starch and it's nice and dry. Dry your potatoes. Can you see the holes in that? I'm hoping that they don't all come out the same size at the end. Do some kind of little finer ones so dry your potato because this is going to be potato number two this is going to be potato which is the smooth one with no holes in it is potato number one potato number one you put your darker color on right so i'm going to be using this one here which is the tawny orange and so let's get some of this onto here now, Martin is a bit concerned because he said, have you ever done this before? And I said, no. <laughs> so, that's... It's not even on a piece of cardboard. No, no. no. Now, make sure you've got it. You don't want it too saturated with paint, so I would offload it a little bit. And now, we're literally going to start putting our oranges in. So, let me get up. And so... I think I want, I want one here, um, just, it should give it a really nice texture, but I want one sort of beside it, so kind of here, so that it looks like one's sitting behind it on the tree. This is actually really nice texture without putting the holes on top of it. It's a bit slippy, 
That one looks like it's got a funky highlight in it. I like that. And we're going to do here. And you can see what I'm trying to do here. Now I'm just going round the tree putting our oranges. Now there's going to be lots of greenery and leaves in this as well, as well as some birds and <laughs> a bit of everything. So I'm going to go round this whole piece and stamp on my oranges with the first colour. This is our under colour for our orange and this is a colour I'm mixed using the Jubilee paints and it's bunting yellow and pillar box red and I've made a nice vibrant orange and this is the potato with the hole in it with the holes in it so I'm just going to show you what I'm going to do next this is just going to go over the top and this is just going to give it a sort of texture like that I've already done this one just off camera I just wanted to check that my plan worked <laughs> always good and that's all I'm doing for here now the ones in the background are going to be slightly darker but we can paint those in we can give that that sort of appearance once we've done the stamping so i'm just going to go on and stamp all the rest of my oranges with the one with the holes in it so i've mixed up a kind of greeny it's not quite a green it's more of a sort of i, I just want it to complement what's going to happen next i've got a small round artist brush and now i'm just going to pa start painting in my leaves now i can already tell that i'm going to need a little tiny bit more green in here just to make it pop a little bit. So, just mix that round. I just want to see under this light. Yeah. And all I'm doing now is I'm just painting in leaves round my oranges. And it's just that just that simple. Um, I'm going to have leaves obviously on, on my branches and just go right over the top of your branches like that. I'm going to around the whole piece now and just put where I think the where I want my branches to go I'm just going to paint them in and we can put a bit of colour on top of these ones we've got going so I think I want something like this here and maybe this one coming out from this orange so really this is just about starting to put all the sort of the greenery on onto here like this you can paint them quite quickly I mean this is just sort of as uh, kind of abstracts not we're not going for perfection so that's I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to paint lots of leaves on so I've done all the leaves and what I'm doing now is I'm just putting just another sort of highlight over the top of them just to kind of brighten them up a little bit just so they're not too lost in, in all the detail. Um, I've finished the rest of it so it just, just so it wasn't so boring for you. Now um, sometimes oranges have sort of kind of a little bit of dark depending on where they're, they're situated. So um, I've got this sort of, the, the original sort of green and maybe you just wanna kinda like give it a little bit of, and just rub it in, just give it a little bit of, you know, just put a bit of shading. Don't have to do it everywhere, just, I mean, this, this is optional. Um, just gives them another bit of dimension. Here, where we've got two, it would be really good if you just kind of just darkened this part here up because obviously this one here is sitting behind that one there. So just do something like that around these ones. Just 
because that would that part there would be in the shade if you know what I mean so just just like that just kind of gives the impression that there's a bit of shade behind there on your oranges um, you're probably gonna this is kind of separated with the leaves so we're okay with this one so that's 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 where we're at with our, our oranges I just want to give these a little bit of a zhuzh up and I think now what I'm going to my intention is to um, I've got some inlays I'd like to put on this some uh, iron orchid design inlays so um, I'm just gonna put those on um, get set up I'm gonna apply those with um, with lacquer but I have to make sure this is completely dry so I'm gonna set up to finish the urn and sort that out and then we'll when this is completely dry we'll put some inlays on this so I'm going to fix this now and then now doing all this at the top this gold band doesn't work so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get some some of the white paint and I'm just going to pack, paint the back the band out white and then we'll we'll fix this ourselves with a different sort of pattern because the the gold is not working and um, there's nothing else gold on the piece right now and as much as I wanted to put it in it doesn't work so I'm going to do the rest of this off camera but while we're down here let's just start fixing here so i've already what i've done is i'm kind of like putting a little bit of shade down here and then just rubbing it in just so you can see where this gets into the pot this bit here's a little bit darker let's sort of do this you can go back and use other colors like some of your orange if you want to do a little bit of highlight on your branch so i'm thinking you could do something like this which kind of gives it a little bit of interest just down here yeah that's kind of gives it a little bit of something a bit of movement and just move that out. so i'm happy with this and how this goes into here i need to darken up here and i need to darken up around here but we need to fix this rim because i want it to go like it's enclosing this soil and right now it doesn't look like it's doing anything so i'm just going to go and get a white acrylic marker just to fix this here and then we'll put the dark shading in here and off camera right now i'm going to do that so i'll go and do this and i'll be back in a minute so what i'm doing here is i'm just fixing all the little boo-boos that i had around the edges um i'm just going to make this little white line black and then we'll do a blue line underneath it for the top of the pot but um, just it will be the darkest area here and I'm just using a really really fine artist brush but I'm not being too particular right around the top there now it looks at least looks like the soils actually in the pot Got quite a bit there. Right. stamps this is dry what i'm going to do now clean my brush and what i'm going to do is i've got some blue ink and an iod stamp and this is going to be one of those situations where i don't know if it'll work until we start so I'm just going to just stamp it a little bit at a time like this and keep kind of going around the pot like this because it's straight so you have to do it in small sections <sighs> but it should hopefully give it the doesn't matter if it's a little bit more than that and a little bit wonky I'm not going to be too bothered about that yeah and I'm just going to do the same with the same with the underneath one and make it curve round as well pushing it down and off the edge there now now it's got a little bit of a sort of wonky line, so I'm going to use this blue 
and my fine brush that I used the black with and I'm just going to thicken up this line here. Um, I'm also going to paint a, a sort of rim around the edge of the, top, the pot just so it actually looks like there's an actual rim there as opposed to it's a straight edge. So I can do this part off camera, you can see what I'm doing, I'm just going along this soil line, kind of eyeballing a line. Get it right up to the soil. I'm going to do this and off camera I'm just going to, whoops, a bit too much paint on my brush there, that'll go everywhere. And on here I'm just going to do a nice thick line underneath here onto the white just to finish that off. Just round there. So these are the two things I'm just going to go away and do off camera. I fixed the pot. It's probably going to need a little bit of shading around it, but I did the stamp in it and just did a blue line. Um, and I've put some shading around here, some highlights in here. So the, the pot's finished. I put a black acrylic line around these leaves just using um, just a, a simple black acrylic pen. Now I haven't done the top ones yet because I'm going to have to take the top part off so I can lean down on it because the pen's not wanting to work sideways on so I'm going to have to tilt that to get the top part done but never mind that's not stopping us the next doing the next stage. I have the IOD Paradise Inlays if you've never used inlays before, you normally, there's I've got lots of videos of me putting inlays on, you normally apply them with paint, etc. But today I'm going to do them with a top coat sealer so I can do them over the top of my already existing pattern. So what I've done is I've cut out some of these and separated them and I've cut out the birds and I've got a little pile here. And I'm just going to find areas in amongst my, um, in amongst all this where I can put these. So I've got various little birds here. So I think the first one I'm going to put round about here. So all you're doing is, is putting if you can do this with this so we'll see this remains to be seen I'm going to apply them all first and then I'm going to wet them so I'm thinking this one in this sort of gap here all I'm doing is I'm just picking areas of the piece that I think will look quite good with a bird in it. I'll get some water for these in a minute. And I've got the little flowers as well. And I'm going to put some of these in amongst, just to kind of give it a little bit of extra interest. So I think this one here is going to be quite, potentially quite nice on here. So I'm just going to put it in, get it into the groove and embed that down in there. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to get some, you know how to get the inlays on. You just get a watery cloth and you apply it over the top with water. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that now. So I'm just working my way around the piece, applying the birds where I think I want them. Um, it's one of those situations where if there isn't a branch, once we've got the bird on, we can go back and put the branch on and where the legs are slightly creamier and there's creamier branches, we'll put some highlight on our branches to make that work. But it's just to give it a little bit more pizzazz, a wee bit more interest. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm just putting on a little bit of top coat onto my piece. I'll show you with this one more time. So say I wanted a flower here, I'm just going to put my top coat on, put my flower on, squish with water, wipe with a cloth and push down 
to embed it in. And when these are completely dry, it's the process in reverse. You just wet them um, and then peel them off. And when it's time to peel them off, we'll, we'll come back and we'll do that. But I'll just go across the whole piece and do this now. The inlays I've applied and I've removed them. You didn't see me do that. You just wet it to pull it back off. But as I said, I've got plenty of other videos um, that show you how to, the proper way to apply inlays. So if you have a look at them. I've applied the birds now. This quite often sometimes happens because there's such a creamy colour in the birds and sort of creamy colours in the flowers and it's lighter than the darker behind. I need to bring this in line with the birds so that it all looks like it's cohesive. So what I'm actually going to do now is I'm just going to go round um, with a fine artist brush. I'm just going to go round all of the fruit. That ties together the birds and the fruit at once and there's not too much light colour. The birds, if you feel like they need a bit of a branch, give them a bit. This one that looks like it's sitting there. And I'm also going to go around this black with the leaves because that now doesn't work. Um, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to get Martin to show you what I've already done some of this. Martin, could you just kind of scan up and show them? This is how it looks once I've brought it all in line and it works. So I'm just going to outline all my leaves here to the bottom of my vase. The glass has been cleaned and I have a clear lacquer which I'm going to apply over the top of my inlays only because these are still live. This paint won't wash off but it will scratch off. It's a decorative item but these if they get wet will wash off so we have to make sure and you know that we get all of the the um, top coat that I applied it with off the glass as well but these are going to have an application of that. And once that's done, I painted in here um, just to freshen it up because um, it's going to be for a kitchen. Um, that's been done and we're just about finished. So I'll get on and paint that and then we'll probably get to staging. One last thing just to finish it off. I've just got some really heavy duty sandpaper here and I'm just sanding it um to reveal the orangey wood underneath because that matches the oranges of the the orange of the oranges and kind of makes it look a little bit more cohesive i'm not doing a huge amount just a little bit here and i've done a couple of edges up the top and that's probably all i'm going to do when it comes to distress and it's just to pull the design parts together i'm going to go away and stage it out and then we'll do the big finish okay so my take on sort of modern art on a piece of furniture is done. Now, as I discussed at the very beginning of this video, this is what I'm trying to say. You don't have to be arty, you just you have to use your creative skills because really there wasn't a huge amount of art involved. A decoupaged pot, some sticks, a potato print orange, outlining everything and adding some inlays. It's all pretty simple and standard stuff. It's just how you put it all together in a creative way to make something. So I've finished it. It's all done. And I just want to show you how cute this little cupboard looks. Because I'm turning it into a sort of kitchen cupboard. Look at that. Mm, tell me that wouldn't look cute in a country kitchen. It would look really nice in my kitchen. Mm -hmm. But there's no room at the end. So that's the inside of there. And I have painted inside here too. Move my chair out of the way. So that people could put like pantry things like flour and cake mix and all these kind of things. You notice I said cake mix there. <laughs> Not an actual, you know, the flour to make it a cake mix. <laughs> so that's what you could do with this. And you could put like cookery books and things in it. I think it's, you know, a, a good use of maybe an outdated piece of furniture that worked really well in the kitchen or a pantry. So I've been Leo for me by Marley. I really hope you've enjoyed this. And give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment, um, share it, and please, please subscribe. Um, I would really, really appreciate it. And I'll see you again another day. Thank you.